Chief Rabbi, Rabbanim, Your Excellencies, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, what an honor to be here with you tonight in this beautiful historic space. Thank you, Paul Anticoni, my mentor and friend, and your amazing team at World Jewish Relief for the invitation and the support. I'm humbled and heartened and frankly overwhelmed by Galena's story. How you, the people in this room, through your caring and generosity, are able to have such an incredible impact on Galena and individuals like her throughout Eastern Europe. We Jews are commanded to do mitzvot, good deeds. There are mitzvot like helping the poor, chesed, which we understand, and mitzvot like not being allowed to wear wool and linen together, shatnes, which we have no idea about at all. And sometimes, when a set of circumstances are just right, and many, many things fall into place, and people's efforts and ideas, and a bit of luck, and even a bit of the divine, come together in perfect synchronicity, you get a miracle. But miracles are rare. Miracles are often beyond our understanding, and seemingly beyond our control. But I am here to tell you tonight that all of you in this room, all of British Jewry, is involved in a modern-day miracle. And many of you might not even know about it. I live in Krakow, Poland, a city with a glorious 700-year Jewish history and an absolutely tragic 20th century. In 1939, on the eve of World War II, Poland was a very Jewish place. 60% of the lawyers and 40% of the doctors were Jewish. Poland's Jewish population had reached 3.5 million, 10% of the entire population of Poland. Krakow, my city, was a quarter Jewish. In September 1939, Germany invaded Poland, and by the end of the war, over 90% of Polish Jews had been murdered. 90% of Krakow's Jews as well. For most of us, I think when we think about Poland, that's the end of the story. We know there were survivors. They came to the UK, the US, Israel, anywhere they could rebuild their lives. But not all the Polish Jews left. Some stayed, and they tried to leave Jewish lives in communist Poland. But it was not meant to be. There was no place in Poland's post-war, Soviet-dominated communist society for Jews, and they were forced to leave or forced underground. The Jews who remained and went underground changed their names. They hid their Jewish identities. They hid their identi Jewish identities often from their own families. A thousand years of Polish Jewry had seemingly come to an end. When communism ended in Poland 30 years ago, in 1989, the country, for the first time in half a century, was free from German and Soviet occupation. Something interesting began to happen. Not a miracle yet. Don't worry, a miracle's coming. Polish non-Jews became very interested in Jewish heritage, Jewish history, and Jewish culture. They began to play Jewish music and open Jewish museums. They started Jewish studies departments at Polish universities and Jewish culture festivals like the one in Krakow. Krakow's Jewish festival started by two non-Jews at the end of communism, and now, in its 30th year, is still run by one of its non-Jewish founders and is actually the world's largest Jewish culture festival. Yes, the world's largest Jewish culture festival is in Krakow, Poland. But that's still not the miracle. In 2002, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, who has since become World Jewish Relief's patron, royal patron, visits Krakow and is inspired to help the Polish Jewish Holocaust survivors he meets during his short visit. He wants to build them a senior citizen center, and naturally, he contacts World Jewish Relief in London about his project. World Jewish Relief here does something that I find incredibly bold. Instead of just saying yes, they do a bit of research, and having consulted with the American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee, the Joint, their longtime partner in helping Jews in need all over Europe, they come back to His Royal Highness with a counteroffer. Their research had uncovered Jewish life beginning to bubble up. Young people were starting to find out they actually had Jewish roots, and they wanted to explore what that meant. World Jewish Relief, at this point, proposed building a JCC, an institution that would not only take care of Krakow's Holocaust survivors, but also serve as a hub to rebuild Krakow's Jewish community. His Royal Highness, in his infinite wisdom, agreed. 
and World Jewish Relief, thanks to people in this room and others, raised the money and built JCC Krakow, opened by the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall in 2008, 10 years ago. And yes, you guessed it, here comes the miracle. Young people, the children and grandchildren of the Polish Holocaust survivors who had stayed began to come out of the woodwork and identify as Jews. They had a place to meet others, a hopeful, nurturing environment to explore their Jewish identities. A young woman named Maria walked into the JCC not too long ago and asked to speak to a rabbi. None of the local rabbis were around, so they brought her up to speak to the next best thing, me, the JCC director. I happen to have grown up Orthodox, and my father would have loved me to be a rabbi, but that's another story. Maria was very nervous, and after calming her down a bit, she began to tell me her story. Her grandmother, well into her 80s, had called her a few days earlier and asked her to come right over. Are you okay, Grandma? She asked. Yes, yes, I'm fine. Just come right over. Maria hurried over, and her grandmother sat her down and began to tell her a story, a story she had not told a soul for 75 years. Listen, she said, I'm Jewish. That means you're Jewish too. Maria had never heard a thing about this before. Total shock. When I was a little girl, her grandmother continued, we were in the ghetto. And one night, with no warning, my parents took me to the edge of the ghetto and they handed me over to a stranger. That stranger struck, snuck me out of the ghetto and brought me to a couple who raised me as their own daughter. And the last thing my mother said to me as she said goodbye was never tell anyone you're Jewish. Her parents were murdered not long after, but she survived and she kept her promise. She got married, had children, grandchildren, a career, and until that moment had never told a soul that she was Jewish until she sat her granddaughter down and told her her story. And at the end, she told Maria, go find out what that means. Find out who you are. Maria finished telling me this and looked at me waiting for an answer. And I was nervous because although this is my job, my life's work even, I don't hear stories like that every day. And I said, Maria, you've come to the right place. There are so many others like you here. I could see the air go out of her. She relaxed a little bit, calmed down. She asked what she should do. I said, come for a Shabbat dinner. Of course, she said, Shabbat dinner, what's that? I told her, then she came to Shabbat dinner, and she met other young Poles who had recently found out they were Jewish, and she began to come recent, recent, regularly. And then she went to Israel on birthright, and today, Maria is an active member of Krakow's JCC Jewish community. And more importantly, honoring her grandmother, she found out who she is. This, ladies and gentlemen, is hap because of you, is happening every day in Krakow. Sitting here tonight is my amazing, beautiful wife, Kasha. Kasha, like Maria, grew up, grew up without knowing she was Jewish. Her sister found out they were Jewish in their 20s and brought Kasha to the JCC, where she met a devilishly handsome, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta throw it in, uh, JCC employee, and Bob's your uncle. They fell in love and got married in the JCC courtyard in front of the building where they met. So on behalf of my parents, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for finally getting someone to marry me. <laughs> Age 47. JCC Krakow serves the entire community, and nothing is more important to our mission, and frankly, for the Jewish world today, than taking care of our Holocaust survivors, making sure that those who have suffered so much have all they need as they age. We, with your help, are the primary caregivers for over 60 Holocaust survivors in Krakow. They're in our building seven days a week until 9 p.m. at night, taking classes, getting physical therapy, celebrating simchas, schmoozing with friends. They, like Galina, have been given a new lease on life. Our JCC is remarkable because it is the one-stop shop for almost all of Jewish life in Krakow, from dedicated space and programming for the young people I've mentioned, and survivors to Shabbat dinners every week to both Orthodox and Reform rabbis holding their classes in our building, sometimes together, 
to the newspaper we publish, to the genealogist on our staff helping people find their Jewish roots, to the over 140,000 visitors who came through our do doors last year to see firsthand the miracle of the rebirth of Jewish life. And I'm especially proud of our newest achievement, our Jewish preschool. It is the first Jewish community preschool to open in Krakow in over 70 years since the Holocaust. We opened it last year, and it has since doubled in size. Every morning, I walk into work an hour's drive from Auschwitz, and I hear the laughter of Jewish children. To me, that's a miracle. Why does this matter? Krakow's Jewish community is still small, but growing and a good part of it would fit in this beautiful hall. I think it matters because being Jewish be means being part of a family. And these young people are lost, and we don't leave our lost family members behind anywhere. But this isn't anywhere. It's Krakow, an hour's drive from Auschwitz, the epicenter of the Holocaust. And we are doing something as a people we thought impossible not going back in time to rescue the victims of the Holocaust, but finding Jews who were lost to the Jewish world because of the Holocaust, and we're bringing them back in. Actually moving the needle, moving the needle ever so slightly back in the other direction. And what does it say about us as a people if Jewish life can thrive not only in London, in New York, Tel Aviv, and Melbourne, and Buenos Aires, but also in Krakow, down the road from Auschwitz. I think it speaks volumes about the resilience of the Jewish spirit and can serve as a bold reminder in these difficult times of the eternal nature of the Jewish people. Tonight, I want to make sure you understand the incredible power you have in this room, the power to give individuals like Galina the basic human necessities most of us never have to think about, a roof over our heads, heat in the winter, a reason to get out of bed in the morning. And you also have the power to affect the future of entire communities, communities like Krakow, a community of Holocaust survivors and their children, grandchildren, and now great-grandchildren, a community that suffered so much and now miraculously has hope. So please, be generous tonight and help people in need, like Galina, like Maria, and like so many out there in our world, that we have the opportunity and the responsibility to help. Thank you.